<laughs> we're not we're not little guys. Hey folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. I'm here with Captain Terry Nugent from Riptide Charters. And today we're here in Cape Cod Bay, late May, back to Memorial Day weekend. Terry, what's the, uh, what's the plan for today? Well, the fish have been spread out quite a bit. Um, we have a, a fair amount of big birds, but there's no real surface activity under the birds. Uh, there's some big bait and it's fast moving, pogies, mackerel, things like that. So the fish are scattered a little bit. So we thought it'd be a great idea to kind of prospect a little bit with the new charter grade deep swimming, swimming plugs. plugs. Yep. Uh, so we threw two of them out off the back. And what I'm doing is I'm using the radar here to kind of follow the fast moving flocks of gannets. And as we get near them, the plugs seem to be going off pretty steady. And we've, we've been out here for about 30 minutes and we've grabbed half a dozen, 10 fish maybe and a couple of really good sized ones. But as we hook up, the birds move off and we just troll it about three and a half, four miles an hour over to the next block of birds. And sometimes before we even get there, we're going off. So the approach today is trolling in open water for big striped bass. So we know a few things. One, we know the fish are here from the birds. Number two, we know the stripers are scattered because they're, you know, we're not marking them in any one particular spot. And number three, we know they're keyed in on big baits here in this part of Cape Cod Bay in late May, Memorial Day weekend. We know that, you know, if they're not on sand deals, it's likely pogies or Big Macs. Uh, so the strategy here, the approach is uh, trolling in its simplest form two big plugs off the back, set it and forget it, and reel in big fish. Ouch. Land this fish. Go easy, Mike. That's a big fish, dude. That's a heck of a way to start the morning. To start the morning. Jesus. Heck of the way to start the day. I'm gonna take my time to revive this fish to make sure it gets a healthy release. Oh, there he goes. Now he's starting to like, swim away from me. There he goes. When you can't hang on to them anymore, that's when you know they're healthy. So trolling in open water like this, you know, just circling around birds, you know, there's fish in the area, but one thing, so you never know what you're gonna get. It's a little bit jack-in-the-box. It's certainly not a bad fish, though. So you can see this fish is hooked two times. One in the front, which I'm imagining it's hitting from the head. And then this back scary one, I don't think it did any damage, but I don't like that placement. It's too close to the gills. So I'm gonna remove the back hook and just count on the front hook. All our lures are balanced to swim with just one hook in the front. I'm just gonna let this little guy go. So it appears both fish have hit this plug in the front and the head portion, which is very typical for striped bass on big baits. Think about it ergonomically, they're gonna to wanna to head this thing off from the front versus hitting from the rear. And I don't like all the secondary hookings I'm doing on these fish. I don't wanna damage an eye or a gill. So me personally, I err on the side of fish's safety versus hooking, especially if it's a catch and release situation. You know, current slot limits are over 28 inches, under 31. These fish are bigger. And so I want to err on the side of safety for the fish, a quick, easy release, and certainly safer for the angler with just one hook as opposed to two. Oh, fish on. Holy shit, this is a big one. So 
We have not had an issue A, hooking up and B, landing these fish with just the front facing treble. This is a very large fish. I have all the confidence in the world we're gonna land this guy. And uh, just taking my time with the fish. I just saw the tail. It's a real nice fish. And I'm just keeping constant pressure on it. Just swimming at me. I'm gonna go where this fish wants to. Holy cow, both literally and figuratively. This is a spanning, we're not, we're not little guys. And that's a beautiful fish. And man, it's awesome. So you can see with just this one hook in the front of the fish, you're not gonna get gill hooks down here, eye hooks, and it's just much easier to release that fish. We're gonna get this back in the water and we're gonna swim this fish, make sure it goes away healthy. So it's really ideal to swim these big fish alongside the boat at idle speed here to make sure they go away healthy. It's a good sign when the fins start coming up, the pectorals start sticking out like this guy's is right now. And I'll just hang on to these fish until they start fighting me and trying to pull away. Right now it's almost like this fish is appreciating the assist here. And once the fish starts swimming on its own, that's when I know it's time to let it go. See it's clamping down on my thumb now. Another good sign. Fins are responding to the motion of the water. The fish is clamping down. Sometimes it might take longer than you think, but it's definitely worth it with these big, beautiful fish. Easily a 40 plus pound bass. Second big fish of the day. And it's absolutely critical in my opinion to make sure these fish go away healthy. It's starting to fight me now. I'm barely hanging on to it. When this fish is ready to go, it's just gonna swim away on its own. So right now, he's, I'm not even holding the fish. He's holding on to me, or she, I should say, and off it goes. So I'm gonna let this lure back out, but if you'll notice, I'm on the inside of the turn. We're making big circular patterns around this school of fish. You never wanna let a trolling lure, particularly a swimming lure, out on the inside of a turn. It's gonna shoot under, it's almost a guaranteed um, tangle downstream. So you always wanna let out on the outboard side of a turn, the, out, the outside. I'm, I'm gonna move this pre-existing rod to the inside corner. And now that I'm on the outside of the turn, I'm gonna let this plug out. You know, again, the beauty of trolling is it's simplicity, there's not a whole lot to it. Just put it in the water, get that lure swimming, and just let it out. Now, how much to let out is probably the question. And today I'm letting out about 150 feet, maybe 200 feet. And um, you know, for me, it's largely about feel. But today we're letting it out. It's, it's about 15 or 20 seconds, trolling at three and a half knots is about how far but you know it'll depend on the reel how far that is but i want that lure down 20 to 25 feet in the water column so the further you put it out the more it's going to swim down and uh just letting it all out i'm going to pay attention because a lot of times fish will grab this on the way out but i'm keeping just enough attention so the lure is digging and swimming a little bit so it's not floating the whole time so i'm getting that lure down so i'm putting a little bit of resistance on it just to engage that lure so it's you know, not floating and starting from zero when we put it in gear. So locked in, making sure the lure is swimming. It feels nice and, nice and harmonious. We're in Cape Cod Bay, so I'm not worried about picking up weed here as much. Set it, forget it, we're fishing. So we put in today at the sandwich boat ramp, which is my favorite boat ramp for Cape Cod Bay. You know, we're out in open water. You know, there's been fish in the area, say from Scorton's Ledge all the way out to the tip of Billingsgate. And we're in 50, 60 feet of water. There's a number of different contour lines. We're approaching, you know, 
getting near Billingsgate where we are, but you know, in my mind, Cape Cod Bay sort of serves like a giant pond, and you know, the name of the game is finding fish. Um, Cape Cod Bay is just a like a wonderful bait keeping entity. There's sand eels, mackerel, pogies, herring. Um, what I like about Cape Cod Bay, well, certainly sand eels. There's a lot of big baits in in the water, and also, you know, obviously big fish, big stripers that go with it, and. Uh, you know, so the name of the game of Cape Cod Bay is finding the fish, but it's a it's an easily like reconned area, radar for birds, just a just a you know fairly easy place to fish, control like we're doing today, topwater plugs, great vertical jig bite in Cape Cod Bay, just a just a cool place to fish with a lot of options, and the fishing will stay great throughout the whole season. You know, we're here in late May, um, you know, fishing's pretty darn good at this point in time. Um, but you, know, you can expect good fishing throughout the whole season here on Cape Cod Bay. So I've been fishing with Captain Terry for a lot of years and one common trait to all our trips together is Terry's like amazing ability to find birds on the radar. Uh, I won't even do it justice by talking about it. I'm going to let Captain T here just walk us through what he's looking for to find these birds. Because today, like, that was how you had to catch fish, is finding the birds. Absolutely. So, we've got a really big Ray Marine open array radar on the boat. And birds throw a radar return. So it's pretty easy to find them at huge distances. We come out of Sandwich Marina today, and within a mile or two of coming out of the canal, we were able to see birds on the radar out seven, eight miles. Um, if you look over here on the screen, fortunately today we're chasing gannets and they throw a really large return because they've got about a six foot wingspan. Now they're not big flocks like we would normally be chasing terns or shearwaters or seagulls. They're much bigger individual targets, but they group up together. So I can look here and see that there's a half a dozen gannets over here. There's another half a dozen over here. So what we've been doing is just getting into the area where the gannets are, trolling the lures around. We've been getting bit pretty readily. The gannets will move off chasing the mackerel or the pogey schools. And I can follow them around and just keep adjusting my course towards where the gannets are. And of course, that's where the bait is. That's where the fish are going to be. It's, it makes it really, really easy. Um, we don't really have to do much else. There's not a lot of surface activity to look for. The occasional, you know, gannet diving into the water is about all. But using the radar, right now we're marking birds at a mile and a half and two miles. You can't see them with the naked eye. It's a little rough maybe to be playing with binoculars, but the radar shows them just nice and clear. It's very simple. I just follow around where the birds are, pull the lures in front of them, and we're getting bit. outfit we we're using today and if you watch my other videos you'll know just how much I love this setup this is the hoagie hybrid conventional rod and the reason why we call it a hybrid is it it's certainly both inshore and offshore but it can be a trolling rod it can also be a vertical jigging rod and so it's just a you know in the 1980s when I grew up you call it a boat rod it's very simple standard rod very soft parabolic action which I like for trolling you can see how soft and forgiving this rod is so when you get a strong hit while you're trolling it uh, you know sort of like a shock absorber and just handles the uh, handles the strike strikes well and then also if you're fighting if you have uh, you know guests on board that may not be as experienced in terms of keeping the line tight it's very forgiving that way outfit is very lightweight it's very easy to manage it's five and a half feet now I have the uh, the Avid, the LX. Uh, this is the it has a six to one gear ratio. I have 65 pound braid on this reel with a uh, top shot of 50 pound test fluorocarbon for trolling inshore. I go offshore. I'll up the uh, leader size, obviously. Um, but this is a handy little setup, and you'll notice the swimming plug I have on here. This is the Hoagie Charter Grade swimming plug. Uh, you know we. 
caught a lot of fish on this today. You can see it's got some battle wounds. You'll also notice that I've removed the back hook on this, and I do that to minimize fish and angler injuries. Uh, they come standard with the classic two hook configuration, but we're mostly catch and release um, out here targeting big striped bass. So I just err on the side of just one front facing hook and uh, you know, again, faster, safer, easier releases both for the fish and the angler. Now this plug is a heavy duty plug. It's through wired. You'll notice by the size of its swimming bill is designed to go very deep. Now the actual depth sort of varies depending on how much line you have out, how fast the boat is going, wind direction if you have wind against the line sideways. But you know, this plug I would say safely goes down 20 to 25 feet and um, you know, just a nice easy setup. Set it, forget it, let the lure do the work on the holder. But a nice simple outfit and uh, you know, here it's again rig for trolling but it's an easy quick switch if you were to switch to vertical jigging. But you know, again that's the nature of the hybrid rod. It can pretty much do anything that involves a conventional reel for trolling or jigging inshore and offshore. Great way to end the day with a fish. The wind's picking up, time to head home, time for lunch. Back at Fisherman's View. The name of the game today was trolling big plugs, covering ground, I'm having a good time. <laughs>